Welcome to Briar's Music Showcase. I'm Briar Cisneros and welcome to another video. So another month has come and gone. February is over. However, I am not done with it just yet because in this one, I'm going to be counting down my top five favorite albums that I've listened to throughout the month of February. Now, I already did my CD haul video. I did a live stream, which you can see behind me. It's been a bit since the last one I did. Um, I think the last CD haul live was back in October, actually. So it was kind of nice to do it again. It was kind of nice interacting with you in the chat. So again, thank you to those who stopped by. And if you missed it, you can always watch the replay. It's in the live section. So go ahead and watch it if you haven't already, if you have the time. So. As I said before, I already went through all the CDs that I bought, but now it's time to point out my top five favorite. And this month was pretty good. There was a lot of surprises, so many albums I hadn't heard, and I'm very glad I was able to. And hopefully in this top five, you'll check out a lot of these that you haven't heard before. And I will say my number one is going to be quite a surprising one. I don't think many people, I don't think anybody will expect it. So without further ado, let's do this. So again, before I start, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe if you're new, and let's start off with number five. So for my number five, we're starting with Progressive Rock. The band is called Nectar, and this is their album, Remember the Future. One thing I got to mention, I just love the cover art to this one. Can make, I just like cover art of many progressive rock albums because they're just so beautiful. I just love the colors on this one. Very nice and pleasant to look at. So Nectar are a progressive rock act. I think they're English, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Welsh. If I'm not mistaken, I'll probably correct myself if I'm wrong. But this is the first time I've ever heard anything by them, and I was very impressed with this one. Uh, it, great passages. There's so many great musical passages through. Uh, the vocals are actually pretty good. It's nothing like they'll blow you away but it just serves the song well there's great melodies and there's even moments where it actually gets a little bit funky a little at times not like full-blown funk but definitely has moments where it kind of gets you moving a little bit and th there's only two songs to it well technically there's it's one song but kind of similar to like thick as a brick where it's really one song but there's two tracks it's divided into two um, so part one has four sections. You have images of the past, wheel of time, remember the future, and conclusion, which is about 16 minutes long. And then part two, you have uh, returning light, questions and answers, tomorrow never comes, uh, path of light, recognition, and just let it glow. So very cool again i pretty much summed it up pretty well but kind of similar to what i did with my uh 80 series we're going to kind of go through what's inside this particular cd um disc one has the original album and disc two has uh, like a live recording so let's just see i don't, I don't know if i showed the back already but let's go ahead let's see what's in the inside so here is what it looks like here see the disc there's disc one we turn it. Ooh, it's stiff. Hold on a sec. There we go. And here it is. Let me just adjust it so you can see it better. But here's disc two. And the pack has this little the recipe for immortality. So if you want to be immortal, just follow the directions and you'll make it. You'll live on forever. You can pause that if you want. Anyhow, let's look at the booklet. So on the back, you have a little some photos of the band there. Gives you some information on the inside. Just kind of looking through some photos, such stuff like that. Okay, let's kind of skim through, skim reading this at the moment, but. Some more photos in history. Here's a live shot. Then you have some lyrics as well. Kind of cool. So again, if you've not heard this one, if you're into progressive rock, 
I'd say you must give this a listen to. So that's my number five, Remember the Future by Nectar. So for my number four, we're kind of still sticking with the progressive aspect, but we're switching from rock to metal. Next up, we have Dream Theater. We have Metropolis Part Two, Scenes from a Memory. So I also bought Awaken in the same month, but I was pretty blown away by this one a lot. So this is a concept album, and I'll get into it in a sec, but again, Dream Theater, very well known progressive metal act, started out, well, their first album was in 1989, I believe, but they didn't start gaining more traction until they released their second album, Images and Words, in the 90s. And this one came out in 1999, so, and I looked it, I looked it up, it came out in October 26, and I was born in October 1st, so this album came out 25 days after I was born, so that's kind of interesting, the more you know, uh, shall we say. Uh, but yeah, just what, can be, what has not been said about Dream Theater, like known for their great musicianship, uh, the crazy guitar solos from John Petrucci, and of course the drumming on this album by Mike, Mike Portnoy, great bass work as well, and of course James Labrie, pretty good singer, really, really enjoy his voice. And yeah, so based on the, al based on the album, uh, it's, like I said, I believe I said it already, but it's a concept album, and it kind of takes influence by a lot of very well-known, very well-known concept albums like uh, the, the Wall, Tommy, uh, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, and many others that that are escaping me at the moment. So the story of this album, and I'll try to keep it brief. Um, basically, it's about this guy who goes into like this like hypnotic therapy therapy session and through this therapy he discovers his past life of, as this female who was murdered and he's kind of going he's kind of trying to piece together like what led to her to, the, to this person's death um, I'm not going to say anything else but it's a very interesting story very interesting uh, subject matter and I very cool to listen to again musically it's absolutely spectacular um, there's some some backing vocals on it and it doesn't happen very often but when those backing vocals come in like oh man that it just elevates it even more it makes it so much more beautiful um so let's go on the inside so you have the disc itself pretty plain and then on the back you have like a newspaper that says murder young girl killed again like i said about a girl was murdered And I, kind of, and I also really like how it actually kind of falls in line to like a like a theater play because you have act one and act two and then the orchestra is just the just the band but band members excuse me then you just have the lyrics and you all have parts so you have Nicholas that's one of the characters Victoria and you know they all kind of have the same format no pictures or anything then you have a character called the Sleeper, and you have the Miracle. Let's see who else. Yeah, not much else to say, but still, very cool. I highly suggest you check it out if you want to get into it. I know Dream Theater, there's like two camps. It's either you're gonna love Dream Theater or you're not gonna like them because some people love them because of how how crazy and how crazy their musicianship is and they can play so many notes uh, quickly but then you have some people who probably don't like them because they're like oh it's too technical oh it's no feel um, I am definitely not one of those people but I can definitely understand why some people will not like it but I really enjoy it and it's, it's my number four so that tells you something so there you have it so let's go on to number three at number three, we have another band that not many people will know, but they may know the person in charge of the band. So we have the Michael Schenker group with their album just simply called MSG. And by the way, this is just, this is kind of an alternate cover. I'll show an image of the original cover. And I must say, I actually kind of prefer that one a bit more than this one. This one seems a bit more too stock for me. But for those who for those who don't know, Michael Schenker got to start in the Scorpions and then he left the band and then he joined UFO and he helped evolate, like evolate their band. Uh, I don't know if I said that right, but I'll roll with it. Uh, 
But then he left that band and decided to go for a solo career, and he formed the Michael Schenker Group. And I think this is their second album, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, just absolutely spectacular hard rock album. I mean, the riffs on here are just so memorable, and the solos. I mean, Michael Schenker, just one guitarist I think more people need to, need to dive into because there's just some great stuff. If you love guitar, you got to check out some Michael Schenker. Um, I haven't listened to too much of him yet, but I definitely do want to try and seek out more of his stuff. Um, because top to bottom, there's like all, it's like all killer, no filler. Every song here is absolutely spectacular. Um, so the other album I had was Assault Attack, and I love that one. I still prefer that one before over this one, but again, not gonna not saying much. They're kind of different in, in in a sense because it's a different singer. Uh, Assault Attack Assault Attack had Graham Bonnet. This album has Gary Barden, and he does a good job. I like his vocal style quite a bit, not as much as. Graham Bonnet, but he for what for what he for what he does, it, it's good for what they were doing. Um, you also have uh, you also have Cozy Powell on drums, who is a phenomenal drummer. I mean, I've always loved his stuff in Rainbow, and even the few stuff I've heard him from Black Sabbath. Uh, just a great rock drummer, and Paul Raymond, pretty well known keyboardist. And then you also have Chris Chris Glenn on bass. So yeah, so that's the lineup on this on this album. So, I already mentioned a lot of the songs here. I already mentioned that it's all killer, no filler. Uh, but yeah, Are You Ready to Rock, Attack of the Mad Axemen, uh, Let's Sleeping Dogs Lie, On and On, I Want, But I Want It More, Never Trust a Stranger, and, and Looking for Love, Secondary Emotion. I just named the whole album because it's all so good. So yeah, it's number three. So, MSG from the Michael Schenker Group. For number two, here's an artist I'm sure many people know. So we have Stevie Wonder, and we have Fulfillingness First Finale. I've been meaning to get Stevie Wonder, at least more of his albums, for a long time because all I have is Songs in the Key of Life, and if you want to count the soundtrack at The Women in Red, that's all I've had for a long time, and so I really wanted to change that. So we have this album right here. This came out in 1974, and man, what a great album this is. Another one that's all killer, no filler. I mean, Stevie Wonder, by this point, is, he was just on fire. I mean, today, even I consider him one of the great musical geniuses ever. Just so many great melodies, some great hooks, some great vocals. I mean, the vocals, my God. I mean, I'll just name the whole album again. So we have Smile Please, Heaven is Ten, ten Zillion Light Years Away, Too Shy to Say, Boogie on Reggae Woman, Creeping, you haven't done nothing. It ain't no use. Uh, why don't go? Wait, I said that completely wrong. They won't go where when I go. Birds of prey and please don't go. A lot of go <laughs> in the end there. That kind of threw me off. But regardless, still fantastic one. So here's what it looks like. And then here's the back. Let's quickly look um, the inside. Here's the disc as well. So. What's interesting about this particular CD, and it's not the first time I've encountered this because I have a couple CDs like that, but when you you open it up normal, but it's, as you can see, it's on its side. So I don't know why they do this, but it's you can like it just does that. So, but I don't I don't get it because as you saw, it doesn't really matter because it still fits. So why can't they do it this way? I don't get it. But regardless, let's look on the inside. So it looks like on the inside here. And you just have the lyrics and some, some artwork. My guess is that it was kind of what the vinyl was like. Maybe the vinyl was like this. I'm pretty sure it was. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. So yeah, I guess it was. I guess it was originally like that on the vinyl. If people have the vinyl, let me know. So, yep. Again, there's not a whole lot to say, but it's just an album that, it's just an album that I'm really glad I got, and I hope to get more Stevie Wonder in the future. So I just realized I just put it on, on its side. So let me just quickly fix it. 
just like so. There we go. So that's Fulfilling This First Finale by Stevie Wonder. And before we get to my number one, here are some honorable mentions. Little sister hits the stage. She can't help it. We are the Village Green Preservation Society. Coming in at number one, like I said, this may surprise many people, but I gotta go with my heart, my number one favorite album throughout the month of February of 2023 is Variety by Maria Takayochi. I know, some of you are like, who? <laughs> but I kind of I kind of found her out by accident because I was trying to look up songs to play on bass and just by random I was like I was looking through it and I found a bass tab video for the song Plastic Love and I was like yeah let's give it a shot and I clicked on it and I was immediately invested I was like wow this sounds really good I really liked it and of course I had to look it up who sung it originally and of course Maria Takeyochi came up and I guess the song got was very popular in, in, in 1984 because this album came out in 1984. And of course it was big in Japan, but I think in the, U, in the US it was kind of a very minor hit. But I think recently it started to get, started to get a, a small resurgence because the internet got a hold of it. Some people started making remixes of it and it kind of helped it kind of gain more popularity over here. And I, of course I was not aware of this at the time. Um, but yeah, I was very interested. I played the song a lot and I was like, you know, what does, how does the whole album sound? And I was like, you know, let's just take a chance. Let's just buy it. I'm not gonna listen to it on Spotify or YouTube or any of that. I was gonna go in completely blindly and I was completely blown away by this. I really loved it. And you know, when they say it blew me away, it's not, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna come, I'm not gonna say like this is the most groundbreaking album ever. It's not, it's not too groundbreaking. It's just, it's good for what it is, but what it does, it does it so well. It's just so many great hooks musically, uh, some great bass work, um, some great horn, some great horns on it, the keyboards. It just comes together and it just makes this great sound. I think in Japan they call it city pop. I don't know the distinction of it, but I just think it's great pop music in general. Um, and her vocals are just absolutely beautiful. I love her vocals. And again, it's, just, it's mainly Japanese. So if you're not a fan of Japanese vocals, you might not like it, but I'm used to Japanese vocals, so I, I don't mind it at all. Um, and there's actually two songs on here, which uh, she sings in English. It's track three. Uh, I'm gonna try and say it, Hunky Day Only You, uh, which parentheses is Let's Get Married. And then the fifth track, it's called Broken Heart. And she actually sings in English on those two songs. And you probably will think like, oh, oh she's singing in English. Oh, it's gonna sound terrible. She's gonna have a very thick accent. It's gonna be distracting. Like, no, like I think her English sing singing is just as good that as well as her Japanese vocals it just sounds so 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 great absolutely loved it um, like again another one of those were top to bottom I loved every song um, yeah and I guess I'll kind of I did do a little research on her so apparently uh, she released a couple albums before and you know they did pretty well in, Jap in, J in Japan of course and you know some good she was getting good some traction but at some point she decided to take a break and she kind of went on a hiatus she got married during that time and during that time of hiatus she began to write her own songs and when she came back she released this album and this was in some ways this was kind of her comeback album and like i said like i just said she wrote all the lyrics to it and her husband actually helped it with the music side so she wrote the lyrics but her husband helped out with the music side and yeah it just was a match made in heaven i think uh so let's quickly see what's inside here i know it's a little bit cracked but you know it's not too bad so it comes in the white i kind of like the white I, i'm so i'm so i'm so jaded with just black 
at this point though it's kind of nice there's more color here so we have a nice little white outside then you have a picture of a dog here so we open it up again you have a lot of you got Japanese text so it's kind of useless for me but you know why not so I'm pretty sure this album is on Spotify if I'm not mistaken you know just again just look up uh, hopefully you see that but Maria Takeyochi there and just you can find that out al this album cover I don't know if it's on Amazon music maybe on YouTube but anything besides that I am I have no idea but if you can get your hold get a hold on this album on a CD vinyl whatever I would I'd say check it out I saw some photos of her but here's just more text Let's see there's any more, some more, another photo of her Again, yeah, 1984 this came out. I knew I knew it. I was right there. So yeah, there you have it. That's my that's my number one pick for February of 2023. So th thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy this, please give it a like, subscribe if you're new. Let me know your thoughts on any of these albums that I've shown. Um, again, if you hadn't seen my live stream, go check it out and see other stuff that didn't make it uh, like i said this month was a great great month I, there was like no album i really hated but there's just more albums that i liked more than others so again thank you again for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care and goodbye for now